Yo, so in this video I'm going to talk about uh, how to do effect automation in Ableton Live, um, how to modulate the parameters of your effects uh, when you're doing an arrangement um, so that you don't have to uh, have a MIDI controller or something like that and actually um, control the parameters yourself and record them live. You can actually just write them in um, and it's actually pretty simple to do. Uh, the way you do it is you use this pencil tool and, that, and that's how you write in everything on all of your envelopes. Um, so I got a little demo loop set up just um, for us to work with. It sounds like this. Um, and this is just uh, an audio clip that I pulled in and um, a drum loop done on a drum rack that I made. Um, and since this is, this is a MIDI track, um, you, can, you can do audio effects on it, I guess, um, but there's also MIDI effects that you can do, um, and we're not really going to do much to this drum track, so I'm just going to minimize it right here. Uh, but it's still there. So Ableton automatically crossfades new sounds in. Um, so at the very beginning of this, uh, it does a, a quick little um, volume envelope right here so that it, you don't get the kind of popping sound. Um, so I'm gonna. What I'm gonna show you first is uh, we're gonna do a try and do a little fade out. So we're just gonna reduce the volume uh, on just the audio track. Or actually, we might as well do it on on the master track and and just fade out the whole track. Um, so to do that, we're gonna need to automate the volume control on the master audio channel. Um, so in arrangement mode, to change the parameter of an effect, on, all, on every track you have, there's this box, and it shows you all of the possible um, things that have parameters that can be changed. On the master track, I don't have any effects on it right now, so it's just all I have available to me is the mixer. Um, and the parameters that come with that are speaker on, panning, volume. On the master uh, track, you have the actual global song tempo, tempo um, the groove amount, and the crossfade amount. Um, the only one we're interested in in doing this little fade out is the is the track volume parameter. So I click that, and you might have noticed this pink line comes up, and that is, uh, represents like the actual value of the parameter. Um, so if I wanted to just do real simple, I can I can just kind of take my pencil tool, click, and write in a quick thing like that. And this is going to sound bad, but it works. So you, that's not very um, fluid. You can, you can see um, the pencil tool writes in the parameters based on the grid um, that you're on. So we have all these jagged, quick jumps, like jumps down in, in volume. So if you want to uh, smooth that out, um, a good thing to do is just kind of, I'm going to set this right here. This is the end point of my fade out. Um, and I'm going to set that all the way down to the, the lowest I want my fade out to be. And then I'm going to click, uh, let's say right here. And just move it a little bit. Should wait. I'm going to get out of my pencil tool and go to here and double click. And that puts uh, an anchor point on there. And then when, you're, when you don't have the pencil tool enabled, you can click and drag and make these nice little uh, gradual slopes. So that's going to sound a lot better now. Okay, 
so you can do this with any effect. Um, I'm going to try something um, a little wacky just, just to show you guys. Um, if I can find it. Oh, I can't find it. So we'll just go on with uh, a different effect. Um, let's try a beat repeat, just for fun. I'm going to put it on the uh, audio track here. Uh, I'm going to set it up so that it fires every quarter note. And got a, a, one, a 16th note grid. So. That's what it sounds like with the bass parameters I have set up. And I'm going to automate the grid across this time. So I want it from here to, say, here. Um, and then, and there, keep it there. Um, we're going to send the grid all the way down to... 128 so it's gonna be sounding really crazy um, and then it's gonna come back up until the 21st measure and be back to normal and then let's say after that let's say let's say before here and after here we just want the beat repeat to be off we don't even want it to be on so I go over here and I, I select the device on parameter of the beat repeat and when the line is up, that means it's on. So we're going to turn it off. Um, and I'll use the pencil tool for this. We're going to turn it off up until here. And we're going to turn it off again from here on out. So here's the envelope of the time when that beat repeats on. And here's the envelope of time when we're changing the grid on it. So I'll show that to you now. Here it's off. Let's start. fading out and the beat repeat just turned off. So that's pretty much it. You can automate any parameter you can think of um, on any effect you can think of um, as well as things such as the mixer and anything like that. Um, so you can start to do some pretty crazy things um, when you start to modulate a bunch of different parameters and stuff. Um, one thing that does kind of suck about it, though, that I, I feel, you can't view two parameters at once. Um, so if you're trying to line things up, like if I was to um, try and do a fade out or something with the mixer on here, um, I have to keep switching back and forth. If I'm trying to line it up with this, this envelope here, um, you have to keep switching back and forth and trying to remember where you put... The, the beginning of one and everything like that. Uh, I think that's just one improvement that they could make to Ableton um, is being able to view uh, multiple parameters at once. But um, Live 9 just came out and that's I don't believe that's in there. Um, they probably won't get around to it anytime soon. So that's, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, just hit me up and I'll be glad to help you out. So have fun.